few years ago I reviewed the Alien RPG core book and rated the game highly. It was the first free league game I read and played and my free league collection has grown slowly but steadily since. In this video I'm going to talk about the Alien RPG's rules in a little more detail. Because there is much to talk about, this video will only focus on the basic rules for action resolution. If there's enough interest, I may explore the game more in future videos. There are two ways to play the Alien RPG, cinematic play and campaign play. In cinematic scenarios you play shorter scenarios more reminiscent of an Alien movie. Free League has published several cinematic scenarios, such as Hope's Last Day that's included in the core book. These tend to come with pre-generated characters and are easier to get into as a new player. In campaign play you create the characters yourself from scratch and play a story of your own making. Like many of Free League's games, the Alien RPG uses a variant of the Year Zero engine. You need two types of six-sided dice to play the game. These are called base dice and stress dice. Free League sells custom dice sets where both type sixes have a target symbol on them and the stress dice is one have a face agger symbol on them. If you're using normal D6s, make sure to use different colors to distinguish the base dice from the stress dice. The game only relies on D6s, but it can sometimes mention D3s and D66s. A D3 is simply the result of D6 divided by 2 rounded up, and the D66 have your all two D6s, where the first represents tens and the second represents ones, giving a range between 11 and 66. This is typically used for various tables in the core book. If the game asks for 2d6, you roll 2 dice and add up the numbers. Most commonly, you'll be rolling pools of d6s. The dice pools are derived from attributes and skills. Each character has 4 attributes that range from 1 to 5. These are strength, agility, wits and empathy. There are also 12 skills ranging from 0 to 5. These are connected to each of the 4 attributes. The strength skills are heavy machinery, stamina and close combat. The agility skills are mobility, piloting and range combat. The wit skills are observation, contact and survival. The empathy skills are manipulation, medical aid and command. The attribute and skill values help form the pool of these sixes that you roll to overcome challenges in game. Even if you have a skill at zero you may still attempt an action or roll for that skill since the associated attribute cannot be lower than one. This guarantees at least one die in your dice pool. When using a skill, first describe what the character does and then add the skill together with its connected attribute. I personally allow players to sometimes pair a skill with another attribute if it makes sense for the type of action they are doing, but that's a house rule and nothing you should expect going into a game. If you play strictly according to the rules as written, the skill is only rolled with its connected attribute, so approach the rules with that assumption. When you know the size of the dice pool you need to roll, grab that many base dice. Some gear can give extra base dice, but that's not typical for all gear. If you get at least one six, your action succeeds. If you roll more than one six, you can perform stunts appropriate to the skill used. Stunts can provide narrative or mechanical benefits, such as managing to impress someone or making a later dice roll easier to succeed at. When attacking someone in combat, stunts can be used to inflict additional damage to the target. In a cinematic scenario, you can spend a resource called story points to effectively buy automatic success. You gain story points by following your personal agenda, but you cannot have more than three at a time. If you don't roll any sixes, something goes wrong or you fail to achieve your goal. Failing on a roll doesn't stop the story from progressing, but it means that you didn't accomplish what you set out to do. The GM takes this failure into account when considering what happens next. If you don't want to face the consequences of failure, you can attempt to push the roll. This lets you grab all dice that aren't sixes and roll them again. You can normally only push a roll once, but some talents can allow you to push a second time. Neither do you have to fail on your initial roll to push it if you want a chance at more sixes than the one needed to succeed. However, when pushing a roll your stress level increases by one point. You only have one chance to succeed with an action. After having rolled the dice and pushed the roll, that's it. You need to find a new approach or wait for the circumstances to change before you can tackle the challenge again. Or you could let another player have a go at it. This doesn't apply to combat though, since you can continue to attack the same target over and over and over until they are dead. 
Apart from pushing a roll, you can accumulate stress by firing a burst of full auto fire, suffer one or more points of damage, go without sleep, food or water, perform a coup de grace. If a scientist in your team fails to use the analysis talent, if a member of your crew attacks you, if a person is revealed to be an android, and if you encounter certain creatures or locations based on the scenario or the GM's discretion. If your character has accumulated stress, you must add stress dice to your dice pool determined by your stress level. When pushing a roll, you increase the stress level before you roll the second time, allowing you to add the extra stress die to the reroll. This increases your total dice pool because the stress makes you sharp and alert, but whenever you roll a 1 on a stress die you risk panicking. If you're firing a weapon with a limited magazine, rolling a 1 also means that you empty your magazine. You cannot push a roll after having rolled a 1 on a stress die. When risking panic, you must make a panic roll. This is something you also need to do if you witness a friendly character suffer from a certain panic effect, if you're pinned down by a ranged attack, if you suffer a critical injury, if you're attacked by an alien creature you haven't seen before, or if you experience a horrifying event based on the scenario or the GM's discretion. When making a panic roll, you roll a d6 plus your current stress level and check the panic roll table in the core book. If your result is 1 to 6, you manage to keep it together. If it's 7 or higher, you suffer a debilitating condition in some form. It's recommended to not roll dice unless it's dramatically appropriate, because if you push the roll too often, even in situations that aren't especially stressful, you risk having the stress mechanic spiral out of control. Save the dice rolls for the moments when they have dramatic impact, and let the players roleplay freely in between. When several players face a challenge together, you don't have to roll dice separately. Instead, choose who is best suited for the challenge to let the others back that person up. Each character that helps, whether they are PCs or NPCs, provide a single base die to the leader's dice pool, up to a maximum three additional base dice. If the roll still fails, it counts as a failure for the entire group. In this situation, individual players cannot even try to roll individually. Group rolls aren't typically used in combat though, where everyone is free to attack any foe, but you can still try to help each other in combat by providing the extra dice. Helping in combat counts as if you're making the same type of action as the one you're supporting. A player's dice pool can also be modified by external factors, such as gear and the difficulty of the action itself. Modifications that aid the dice roll add extra base dice, while modifications that hinder the dice roll remove base dice. If there are multiple contributing factors, combine them. For example, plus one modification and minus one modification cancel each other out. The modifier caused by an action's difficulty typically ranges from plus 3 to minus 3, where a trivial action adds 3 dice and a formidable action subtracts 3 dice. Specific rules may also cause modifications, such as when aiming carefully with a ranged weapon, when shooting from a long distance, or when trying to manipulate someone from a bad bargaining position. Talents can also cause and interact with modifications in different ways. Finally, there may come up situations where you're not rolling dice against a specific challenge, but against another character that also rolls dice against you. This is called an opposed roll. To win, you must roll successfully and get more sixes than your opponent. Every sixth roll by your opponent removes one of yours. If you have more sixes than the opponent can remove, you win. The opposed roll is also divided into an attacker and a defender, where one character is initiating the contest and the other is reacting to it. You can only push rolls when you're the attacker. So this covers the foundation of the Year Zero engine as used by the Alien RPG. If you like this video and want to see more, make sure to like, share, comment and subscribe. If I make another video in this series, the next one will cover the 12 skills in more detail, including the different stunts you can do with them. Until next time.